Hello, it's Marsh Engel. I'm so very happy to be here with you today with the Emerge Seven Day Immersion. It is a masterclass series that features some of the most dynamic leaders I know who have incredible insights, information, and wisdom that's going to share with us so that we can emerge during this time of great, great change. I want to introduce to you today one of my favorite, favorite people and a beautiful teacher and a beautiful uh, multi-published author and um, helps a a lot of other women become published authors as well. Becky Norwood. Becky, thank you for joining me today. Oh, so happy to I, have you. I am delighted. It's so exciting to be a part of this. No, it is exciting, isn't it? Especially as we uh, continue to gain momentum as amazing women who are emerging into the world. And the word emerge means something different for every single one of us, which is one of the things I found most fascinating about the women that I've spoken with is that we all have a different perspective. That leads me to ask you, Becky, what experience would you like to speak today that really brought you the greatest insight and uh, created I think some great, incredible forward movement in your life. What would that be? Oh, it certainly has. And I'm kind of challenging the underlying characteristic of women to feel like they're unworthy and that their voices and their stories don't matter. And I think that's that's really the at the heart and soul of, of what we're going to be talking about today. Mm-hmm. Great. Is there an experience that you personally had that challenged you yourself with feeling as though your voice was worthy and that you had a voice that mattered? No, oh, certainly was. For far too many years, my voice was was completely silent. And I had grown up in a, in a really rough, um, lots of abuse on all different levels. And um, it was very common to be constantly told I was ugly, stupid, and never amount to anything. And so as I grew up into adulthood, it took me a long time to kind of figure that out. And I at, initially, I think I attracted the same type of people into my life as, as what I grew up with, because that was familiar. But the heart, inside, I knew there was something far more. And, and it was that journey that has led me to the work that I do today. Mm. So tell us if we broke it down into, there's a couple things come to mind. One is the belief that our voice don't, does not matter and that we're not worthy. Where does that, you know, where do we begin to break through that belief? And how can we then be inspired to move our voice out into the world? I think there's two questions, two there's layers two to that question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's very good questions because one of the things that I discovered and what worked for me was when I had attended a class about writing a book and it sounded, wow, that sounds really amazing, you know, and, and at the, in that very moment when they started teaching me this class, I knew the title of my book and it, it was The Woman I Love. And it was such an incredible time for me because, well, I did find resistance to it because sitting down to write my story was really difficult, but I persisted and it took me a couple of years to do it. I persisted because I started to see this a whole different perspective on life begin to emerge, to, to emerge actually, to come about. It, there was, it was like, you know, putting it in, putting the, many, many situations that happened as I was growing up that were tough, really difficult situations, even to the point of my own father finally just taking his life because of the pain he had caused and he couldn't live with it anymore. And realizing, feeling like at that point that I had played a huge role in that because I challenged him as to, you know, for what, what had happened. But the writing of it really helped me to go dig deep and as I continued on the writing and actually published the book, I found that it, it's like there's a healing that takes place. Mm -hmm. There's just incredible healing because it's, it's as if it just releases it, it lets it go. And it doesn't hold the same power. But it is also a journey because if I had stopped there, it still wouldn't have been enough. Mm -hmm. I had to keep going with that because there's always the triggers and always the things that life brings our way. There's also the, the times where you feel like me, you know, this, do I really matter? You know, is what's really happening here? 
And so as time has gone on, I speak on many stages on the subject. And as my voice gets out there, I grow and I learn because I'm willing to speak up. I'm willing to, to tap in to the power, the healing and transformational power of story mm. to, to learn and grow. And my story that I wrote then is not the same story that I would write today, but that's okay because it got me to the place where I knew I had impacted people. I made a difference in other people's lives because there were people that needed to hear my story and it was perfect for the time. The story that I would say now is totally different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I speak a lot about evolving purpose. And I think also it could directly relate back to as we tell our story, the story evolves, our understanding of the story, the strength that we find in the story, and uh, uh, you know how, how that strength then begins to impact the way we move forward into the world simply by acknowledging our story and looking at it from a new perspective. So having said that, are there ways that we can begin to break down our stories or distill within our stories the strengths that we find Yes, and I think that is a process, but when you understand, and I think in, I've worked with a lot of women in, in, in bringing these stories to the world. And we, there's always that common thread. But when I realize that truly in, the, in the, the power of the transformative power, the healing that comes from the storytelling, and I, I am very adamant about not losing the story. I'm very adamant about let's keep the art of storytelling going because it's the stories that connects the heart. Because we can all give facts and figures. We can all say, this is what happened. Okay. But this is what happened and therefore, and how I've grown from it. And then giving the, the story behind it, that's where we connect the hearts and we become an advocate for others. And the advocacy, when I started to look at Look at the the power of storytelling in that way. That I could be an advocate for somebody that didn't have a voice, didn't know there was anybody else out there that that had had encountered the same kind of issue, didn't know there was anybody that could be there for her to hold the light and to shine the way, and then by are telling, are having the courage to stand up and tell our stories and write our stories, shines the light for somebody else, then we're also become the way shower. We show them another way. Because it can be one little thing, one fresh perspective for an individual that will turn the lights on and that will reach the heart and start their journey to wholeness and whole, wholeness. And what else are we here for? But to make a difference in our world. Mm -hmm. What else is... What is the purpose of us doing something like this? It's to become the way showers, the unifiers, the truth tellers. And in the process, we become the legacy maker. And, and leaving that legacy is what catapults us into understanding our own self-worth. Because mm -hmm. when we do this, the more we gain, the more we grow, we find other avenues where we still need to grow. And, but that's part of life. That's just about what it is. But it's in the art of storytelling that we can reach those goals. I love that. I love this conversation. I remember that um, I read a quote that Maya Angelou and Oprah spoke about the uh, leaving a legacy, creating a legacy, and that legacy isn't something that you're known for after you're gone. Legacy is something that how you touch the lives of people every single day, how you interact, Absolutely. how you engage. And through our storytelling and evolving our story, and some people say owning our story, I prefer to say owning the wealth of wisdom and the strength that comes through understanding our stories, uh, we really do shift the way we interact and relate with others. So it I think- It changes our perspective. It does far. very quickly yeah. and it can constantly, it's a constant, it's not like, okay, I've told the story and now I'm done. It's really about, I've told the story this way. What are some other ways that I can begin to tell the story? And are there ways that you found that will trigger a deeper understanding of how to tell our story? 
Yes, and it, and, and it all centers around the fact that when we understand the, the depth of what we're doing and we begin evolving through this whole process ourselves, that life is a constant learning. And so it's, you know, through this, through the, the process of it, the uh, it, uh, Amazing Woman It's Your Time to Emerge book, we have worked together for a good while, but every bit of the way, it's the willingness to be able to continue to learn, the openness to really deep, deep, deep dive kind of into where are we now? Where is our emotional well-being right now? Where is our, our spiritual well-being? Um, what words are we using to speak out to the world to show that there is a different way? And now is the better, best time of ever in the world to be, we have the tools to do it. We have the resources to do it. We can easily publish books to do it. We have stages to get on, whether they're virtual or in person. We have all the technology that we're using now to do that. And so the biggest thing is that every day we need to be the, the importance of tapping into that wisdom that we've been cultivating and learning and digging deeper and, and really contemplating how mm -hmm. we, we share our stories. I love you know, Les Brown once said, he said, the graveyard is the richest place on earth because that's where you'll find all the hopes, all the dreams, mm -hmm. all the things that the books that were never written, the new inventions that never happened because people were too afraid, didn't have the confidence to stand up and do what they really, their hearts really wanted. And that's how it was for my book. And then uh, like uh, Maya Angelou said, there's no greater agony than burying this, the an untold, untold story in your heart. And I know for myself that once I finally came to the point that I could stand up and say, this happened for me, I had been silent. I was quiet in the background. I wasn't front and center. I couldn't get more or more get on a stage than anything in the world. And if I did, my knees would shake so bad that I'd be, <laughs> you could see me in the very end of the back of the room shaking. And yet now I feel like that, you know, I can do, I can get on a stage and speak my heart and speak the truth and show a different way with confidence. And yet every day I keep one. And mm -hmm. so it's through the excavation of what it is, what it is, yes, you know, what it is, the deepness of it all. In writing the Amazing Woman books, the legacy books, they always take about a year to write them. And people are so intrigued by the idea that it could possibly take a year to develop a book like this. But it's because each of the authors within the book evolve as they're writing the stories, as they're writing their chapters to where they go back and rewrite it again, because yet it's telling a more expansive view of what they really wish to say. And then they'll rewrite it again. And I know that as you were writing, I think maybe you rewrote three or four times. You could probably rewrite it again today, even as it's being published, uh, because there's such an expansion that happens as you write and as you communicate a story and as you gain the strength, as you said, you could stand center stage now and tell that story because there's a new sense of, of a self. There's a new depth of understanding of your wisdom. And I think that's the power of what you're talking about here in storytelling and in, uh, in, in writing and sharing and speaking our truths. Oh, it is so, so very true. And, you know, I think that stories are, um, when we're trying to make a difference in the world, the, the art of storytelling can reach the heart in so many more ways than we could ever. And when we worked together on my chapter, that's where we did uncover the, the four pillars of a story. You know, the, the advocate, the truth teller, the way shower, the unifier, and then tie it all to, into having the courage to stand up and leave that legacy mm -hmm. for somebody else to pick up that torch also. Mm -hmm. And I think about, there was a story I heard once and it was about um, this huge, big herd of elephants that, that were standing, all they had was a teeny tiny rope at their ankle. 
but they didn't try and get away. And it was such a puzzling thing to the person that was observing this that he asked the, the elephant keeper, you know, why, why is this happening? He says, when those elephants were babies, we tied rope around them so they wouldn't stray. And they were, they've gotten so used to it. Now that they're big, they don't stray because that little rope, that same size rope is around their leg. And all it would take would be one quick yank and they could be gone. Mm -hmm. But that's often how it is for us. If we don't, if we don't get challenged, if we don't look, reach out for the opportunities, if we don't see there's another way, if we don't continue to grow, we can stay in that same spot and be miserable. And not to say that there's not stuff that comes up and slaps up us upside the head once in a while, but at the same time, it's what we do about it. And it's the choice that we have to continue to grow and to continue to emerge into the, the amazing women that we are. Oh, I love this. I love this. I love the understanding of the visual of seeing ourself tied to a post with a set of beliefs mm -hmm. that are really being silenced because we've not yet shared our stories. We've not yet spoken from a perspective that's really evolving us, allowing us to be more expressed in the world. And I think more than ever right now, I know I don't have to say this to too many for everybody to, to know that to be is that right now more than ever, women's voices are needed in the world because I believe that women's voices carry a great depth of inspiration, a great depth, depth of healing. I know in the book, you spoke about the healing power of story. And that's really what we're talking about here today, the healing power of story. If there were one way that you would wish to express in the most, I think, impactful way that would encourage someone to believe and trust that their story and their voices matter, what would that one message be that you would share with us today, Becky? Your story does matter. Your voice does matter. You're worthy of sharing your voice, your story to the world. And the more you do it, the more you will grow. The more you do it, the more impact it will be. And you will begin to emerge too. As a, as a beautiful woman with a voice with, I don't know, I think women are kind of like glasses. You know, we're, we, we rise and we, sh we have a lot of strength. Women have so much inner strength. Maybe that comes from having to, from bearing children and from being the, the caretaker of the families where with so much responsibility to make sure. And many of us have had to work through the whole mm -hmm. work as well as, you know, providing for our families at the same time, not just making sure the house is taken care of, it's everything else that goes with it. But we come from really deep seated within us is often we've heard that, that we don't amount to much. And it, it goes for many generations that it's passed on. But as we begin to realize our value, our strength, and what we can bring to the world, that's when we step up to the plate and we say, your voice does matter and you need, your voice needs to be heard. As I keep thinking of this, is there one sentence that we could start with that would, I, I'm just imagining right now, I remember I can relate to you saying that when you first started speaking and, and uh, standing out into the world as a messenger, I had no voice either. It was impossible mm -hmm. to imagine now, but I had no voice at all. I did not speak on stages. I would never, if somebody hand me the mic, I would pass it along. And um, it, definitely telling the story, telling my story is what began the healing journey. But I'm wondering if there's a woman right now that can relate to what you're, what you've just said and what I've just said about being a little, maybe a lot fearful about mm. speaking out, speaking, feeling safe, speaking out, feeling as though her voice is of worth. What is that one sentence maybe that she could start with that would begin her journey into writing her story? Hmm. I have not thought of it that way. Um, how do you break free of the resistance to telling your story? Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it puts me in mind of a quote that I saw from Dean Koontz, and he's a best-selling author. He's written many books. And he had said that he grew up in, in great poverty, 
a very heavily alcoholic father who was very abusive. And his piece was found in, in books. And he said the books found gave him a way to feel less isolated, more connected to the human experience. And it helped him to put order into the chaos of his life and light in the darkness. And so I think that's how, if you can sit down and start writing your story, you will find great healing power in the value of putting pen to paper or tapping those keys to, to really develop and create your story. It will evolve, it will change. But when you understand the deeper power in that and the, the impact that it brings mm -hmm. and the transformational power that it can bring to, some, to those that learn about it. I have been so engrossed in the story, story from so many that even this morning I was on an interview and it was when the person, I, I did my TV show and the author wrote a book called Breaking to Be Me. And she talked about having been in incredible pain. She had jumped from a cliff and broke her back. And she was in years and years of solid pain. Now she works with, with people to transform their subconscious mindset around that. And she was healed when no doctor could heal her. But it was through the power of the subconscious mind. Until she told that story, you wouldn't understand the work she's doing in the world and the power behind it and the why behind it. Once you hear that story and then understand the work she's doing now, wow, what a transformation. So, you know, what I think I'm hearing you say in all that you're sharing with us is that within our story is a depth of worth and value that is many times impossible that we see until we begin to tell it and we begin to write it. And as we begin to do that, we get, we create a little bit of distance from being the story and seeing the story from a, a perspective of, wow, this is really an amazing experience. And through that comes that sense of belonging. We move mm -hmm. out of isolation. And I think we, we move into a level of confidence because now we've seen ourselves from a perspective of what we know is possible when we, when we, of what we've experienced and how we've learned and gained strength through it. Well, we're not, we're no longer standing in the story. We're standing on the story. And there's a big difference in, in the way that, that feels. And as you continue to grow in that process, and continue to learn and continue to go deeper with, with the, the true heart of the story, that's when you begin to realize, I love wow. That. I love that we're not standing in the story, we're standing on the story. And through that, we do rise. Yes, we, isn't that amazing? Yeah, and so that's, my, that's my passion. And I always ask the questions, how can you begin to create a new story for yourself? And what would sharing your story do for, for yourself? And what would sharing your story do for somebody else? Mm -hmm. And what way could, would that bring you freedom? How would that freedom bless you? You know, so in what ways could it bless others? Mm -hmm. And that's a big question. How do you break free of that resistance to telling your story? It takes courage. But I can certainly say for what happened in my life, that it transformed my life, you know, that it made all the difference in the world. And it started a simple act of starting to write about my story and then sharing it with the world. And writing the story had its incredible, I know we talk about journaling mm -hmm. and your courses, you talk a lot about journaling and the power of the journaling. And, and this is part and parcel right along the same thing, mm -hmm. you know, that the, the healing that comes from asking the right questions, even when you write, you know, to, to really get to the full depth of how do you, what did you learn from the, your experiences? How did it affect you? There's some kind of magic that happens when you're writing. 
It's powerful. To, we know more than we realize we know. And yeah, we don't to, think we know. To show, yes, it starts to show up on paper. I love the conversation. I could speak all day with you about this. I think writing, as you've taught in the amazing woman, it's your time to emerge book. You know, you've taught today. You've inspired, you inspire me just us <laughs> thinking about writing story. It, it allows, allows us to really bring value to the conversation about what it means, not just to myself, but what it means to other women to realize our strengths, our powers, our capacities to serve, our creative capacities that are within us, that are untapped. We could go on and on. I think it's an incredible experience to uh, witness the transformation that happens through story. And I'm so grateful that uh, we've had a chance to speak about this today because uh, I hope someone listening right now is moved by, uh, by the conversation and decides to pick up a pen and start to write. March, it's been incredible for me to, to work alongside you with this. I've learned a tremendous amount through this whole process of bringing this book to the world. Mm -hmm. And you have a very, you're very gifted in being able to help us to really dig a little bit deeper each time we, you know, each lesson, each time you say, Becky, we, could add a little more to this and I'm like what you know and now I'm incredibly proud because it's the same material that I've been able to use to speak on many stages beautiful it's a beautiful beautiful story um, it's a beautiful teaching it's a empowering expression of what's possible when we uh, when we embrace our experiences from the perspective of the true value that they're bringing to our life and to our futures. So I just thank you, Becky. I'm so thrilled. Please visit amazingwomannation.com. You're going to learn about Becky Norwood right there. You're also, not only are you going to be able to view this um, series that we're doing. It's a seven day immersion. So you're going to have seven incredible experiences, but you're also going to hear uh, Becky's three minute mastermind, which is the art of breaking through in three incredible rich minutes. So you want to, uh, to check that out. It's amazingwomannation.com. Thank you so much. Thank you, Becky. And I know we're going to be talking very soon. Oh, I'm sure we will. And thank you. And for the listener, just really take the time to enjoy what each woman that's in this book is bringing to you because it's, it's our heart to our experiences of life and wisdom that we've obtained through the hard knocks that all of us get. We can't live on this earth without it. We know that those things happen, but it's what we do about it and realizing that there's a lot of support and strength in, this, in the amazing woman that, women that participated in this book and out many, many, it just keeps spreading. It does. That's what we're after. Spreading. We're a movement. You're the movement. Yes. Speak with you soon. Sending you big love. Thank you.